Hey, welcome to the family. Welcome, welcome, welcome. This is a bit of a random topic, but I figured, hey, why the hell not? Consider this a talk between friends, between sisters. Consider me your internet sister. I wanna talk about hair removal today. I didn't have anybody to tell me any of this. One, I was growing up when I was trying to figure it all out. It was sad, there's a lot of stories. And I went through a lot of pain, a lot of trouble, a lot of mishaps. <laughs> <laughs> and things that I probably shouldn't have done because nobody told me. So I'm gonna be the person who tells you, just in case, just in case. Number one, I have to declare, because some people like to reach and reach and nobody's gonna be reaching for me, please. Yes, okay. But I wanna say that this video is not saying that you have to remove hair. It's not mandatory. You don't have to do it if you don't want to. I'm not being made to do it. It's not subject to society. Do, 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 do. Fam. Just do it if you want to do it, yeah? If you want to do it, remove hair. If you don't want to do it, don't do it. I'm just saying, this is what I did, this is what I've done, this is what I does, yeah? I want to just talk you through what methods I use to remove hair on the various parts of my body, from my face, to my pits, to my coochie, to my legs. <laughs> yes, we're going to talk about the coochie too. Don't come for me, please. Don't stand for my life. Don't, don't do it. Backstory. I started removing hair, I think, from around 16, 15, 16. You know when you're around 15, 16, you start to realize that your body's changing, you're growing these triangle titties, things are changing, and hair starts to pop out of nowhere. Yeah, that all hit me by surprise. That all just came out of nowhere to snatch my life. The first type of hair removal that I delved into was eyebrows, and this was an unfortunate story that involves razors. <laughs> Do you know the razors that come, it's like a blade, it's one single blade and you're meant to do something, something like this. And I didn't know anything about plucking your eyebrows beforehand and we had one of these razors in the house. Trust me, I don't even know why I, why I was using someone else's razor. Don't do that, don't do it, no. My mum's room had a mirror on the side there and I was quite short, by the way, I still am very short. 5.3.5. I stepped in the box to make sure that I could actually see myself on the reflection. There you go, as you can imagine, I'm there on the box thinking, what am I gonna do? How am I gonna slay these brows, though? I start, start shaving, start shaving like the top and shaving the middle. And then as I get to the side, I think it was actually this eyebrow, let me not lie. As I get to the side like this, I slipped, babes. <laughs> babes, half. <laughs> Let me not lie, I had a half eyebrow and these are times before I knew about eyebrow pencil. I had to go to school for a very long time with half an eyebrow and my mum didn't say nothing. You know the ones where your parents just know that you don't fucked up, so they don't really try and get involved, it's more like you learn your lesson. And at that point I said, you know what, <laughs> this hair removal tin, this one's not for me. I was scarred. I don't know how we got from there to now here well, I'm virtually hairless. I get rid of hair, like, you, there's no tomorrow. The hair doesn't have a chance to get my body. Let's talk about facial hair removal. What do I do? For the longest time, I used to use tweezers to remove and to shape the hair on my eyebrows. And then threading came along and I jumped on the threading bandwagon because, you know, me and Shilpa, we were all good. Sometimes she messes them up, but most times she gets it. Be careful who you pick as your eyebrow lady. Be wise with your eyebrow lady choice. Don't just, you can't just go hickey hagger. You can't just go to every, any eyebrow lady. Find the eyebrow lady and be loyal, be dedicated. Let me not lie, the first time I went to Shopa, we, we disagreed because I said, babes, all I want is a shape up. Don't take too much hair off. She gave me African auntie ladies thin. Moving down from the eyebrows, to the mustache. Story time. I was dating this guy for a very long time. But one day I was just looking in the mirror and I realized I had a mustache. I don't know how long it had been there for, but it suddenly was so prominent. Like there was just little whiskey hairs here. And I was thinking, I've been kissing this guy all this time and he's never once mentioned the fact that I've got whiskers. How could he do me like this? I don't know if he was the real MVP for that or if he was a bit shady for that, but I remember just being really paranoid about these kind of hairs. They were really fine. They weren't like my dad's mustache, no way, no. They weren't beard gang, but there, there was hair. There is definitely hair 
there. I went online trying to research what to do with mustache hair. Options came up about bleaching it. I'm dark skinned. And I don't play with bleach. Shave it, which was hell no. So I went for the third option to use hair removal cream. And this is what I use. Nair sensitive hair removal with chamomile and young I have to point this out by the way. There is a specific Nair which is designed to for you to use on your face. I believe it's not as strong, it's not as potent as this one, but I've always used this one, so I will continue to use this one. So what I do is I take this and I put it on my moustache and the little edges here, the little whiskers, and I let it sit for about a minute maximum because it's the hairs are not that thick and this is quite strong. And then I use a damp cotton pad and I just wipe it off. The only downside about this is that once you remove the hair there, your foundation will not stick to your face. Just get it from me. If you use this, it will take off all the hair and you know, your face is full of tiny little hairs which helps your makeup stick on. No matter how much you try and put foundation, it will just slide and slide and slide. So I normally do this on the weekend uh, or when I know I don't need to put makeup on. I also used to use this a while ago to just kind of shape my eyebrows. Yes, it's a cool trick, but you have to be very careful and it's really quick but you have to be very careful. And again, it kind of gives you a halo eyebrows and it makes your skin there a little bit lighter. So I, I just tend to, to stay away from this for my eyebrows. The only thing that I do put straight after using any hair removal treatment anywhere on my body is vitamin E oil. It's just good for the skin. I'm a firm believer in vitamin E oil. If you guys know, you know. And if not vitamin E oil, this coconut oil. Coconut oil has a million and one uses. So straight after using this hair removal technique, I'll just dab some oil and it will sting, it will sting, but I will be mustache free. Moving from there down to here. My pits. Yes, she's got it. Oh baby, she's got it. I used to shave, number one. I used to shave back in the day. I used to shave using, not pencil, using a uh, razors, so like this one or this one. This is a Bic razor, Lady Laser, and this is a Wilkinson razor as well. The difference between this razor and this one is the fact that this one has one blade and this one has two blades. You want to use a razor that has more blades. If you use a razor with one blade, it just means that the hair is going to snag when you're kind of shaving, and then you're more susceptible to ingrown hairs and shaving bumps. And those are nasty and painful and itchy and not nice. So you want to use a razor that has more blades. Up to five is brilliant. That's why guys use like five blade razors for their face because it's, it's quite good. Just know that if you're going to use the razor to shave your armpits because it's easy, uh, just make sure that you always use shaving foam. Like it makes my skin cringe to think that I think back, back, in the day when I was like 15, 16, I never used any of that. I just used to use water, just dry water and just Oh, Lord! We've come a long way, ladies. We've come a long way. Don't do that. Use shaving foam. You can use your dad's shaving foam, any shaving foam, just as long as it's the, the area is nice and lathered. Another thing is to change your blade each time you do it. This is why I get cheap blades because then that way I don't feel any type of way about just chucking it away. It's not that deep, it's not gonna cut my soul. It just means that the blade was sharper and it's just kind of more hygienic to change your blade. Alternatively, you can use hair conditioner, which is actually what I use most of the time because uh, I don't know. I always just seem to forget to buy shaving cream. And in fact, if we have some coconut oil in the bathroom, I will use conditioner and mix a little bit of coconut oil, slather it on my legs and then shave. And when you're shaving, pro tip, nobody told me about this. Shave, not against the direction of the hair, but down first with the flow of the hair, the way the hair grows down. Don't shave against it. No, no, no. Shave down first and use short strokes and then shave upwards again to get any shorter hairs. Don't start by going on my coochie, I wax. I do at home waxing, TMI, TMI, TMI. I used to go to a wax lady. So waxing isn't a new thing for me. I used to go to a lady who used to do like, you know, the, that was really expensive in fact. I think I stopped doing that and went to home waxing kits because 
I think to get a Brazilian just on the coochie area used to cost me 30 pounds each go. 30 pounds. And you need to get it done every kind of six weeks, six to eight weeks. Six to eight weeks spending 30 pounds. I was thinking this is an expensive habit, you know? And I was, bear in mind I was only 18 at the time. So I was thinking, I, I mean, I could find a better way of doing this. So I went to Boots and that's when I discovered at home waxing. These are hard microwavable wax. This is by the brand Nads and this is by the brand Nair. You can get these from Boots, by the way. This one is about £10, nine, nine ninety something, and this is £12, it's a bigger box. You put these in the microwave according to the time that it says in the box, and then you put it on your skin, and then you peel it off without having to use wax strips. Story time! Major, major story time. Guys, you have to be so careful if you're going to be using this as a method of waxing. As you can see now, the wax is hard, and it won't come out, and you see, foolish girl foolish nonsense girl. This was back in second year of university. I was there trying to do my thing, trying to get it all clean and nice and cute. I had just come back home uh, from my hometown. This is very cute. I've just come back from my parents' house and in my parents' house we had a different microwave to the one that I had in my university um, place that I lived. So I took the pot and put it in the microwave and went to have a shower because I wanted it to, I wanted the wax to melt and then I wanted it to cool down and by the time I'd had a shower I would be ready to just wax straight away. I turned the dial on the microwave and left. So what I'd forgotten is that the microwave that I was used to using at home for the weeks that I was at home was completely different and the dial did different things as opposed to the one that I was using now. And I went to remove this from the microwave and as I was trying to remove it, I found that it was stuck on the microwave plate. So instead of just picking the whole microwave plate out, I tried to pull it as it was in the microwave and I'm pulling and I'm pulling and I'm pulling and the next thing, the whole pot of wax just spilled. In fact, here, I don't know if you guys can see, just spilt on my hand, and I mean hot, boiling, hard wax. Instead of putting two minutes, I think I must have put like 10 minutes because the dial was different. So this was extremely hot, bubbling wax. Just literally the whole pot poured on my hand. Oh my gosh. I have never experienced so much pain, my whole body literally goosebumps like vroom. My body just reacted, I was like, what the hell have you done? I screamed so loud, the neighbors came knocking on my door. I go to Amy, I get to the lady at the desk and she's like, what's happened? And I show my hand, she's like, oh my God, get through, go through. And I was seen like immediately, it was, it was so dramatic, let me tell you guys, it was so dramatic. And then when the doctors checked it out, they figured that I had a second degree burn, guys. Second degree burn. So when I'm telling you be careful with the wax, it's great, but you need to be careful because I had a second degree burn from trying to wax my Nuna. Real talk, you know? Is it really worth it? Is it really worth it? And that is it. So I hope you guys appreciate the video. I just wanna be, you know, a bit more open and just talk about these things. Seeing as, you know, some of us do shave, wax and all of that. So why not? Why the hell not talk about it? Let me know what you think about the video. Let me know of any horror stories. Actually, that's what I wanna know. In the comments, can you tell me if you have any horror hair removal stories? You know, do you have a second degree burn like me or not?